This is the Generations Radio Broadcast. My name is Kevin Swanson. Dave Buhner also in studio with us, a couple of homeschooling dads, uh, coming to you with a message of faith, family, and freedom in the 21st century. You say, what's that? Faith? Family? Freedom in the Western world? Anywhere in the world? You're kidding me. A Christian faith, uh, a Christian who gets back to the truths of God's Word and and believes in the absolute standards of God's words as as directing ethics and truth in the 21st century. Yes, yes, we're talking about faith, family, and freedom. You say freedom, what's freedom? Freedom, you mean freedom from socialist totalitarian governments that have increased its hold on just about every area of life since 1900? Yes, we're talking about freedom. And I I know it's rare, I know there's very, very few places around the world where freedoms are being defended by governments uh, rather than attacked by governments but uh, but we 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 believe freedom is important and we think there ought to be some people who desire freedom not freedom not just to smoke pot and freedom not just to rob banks freedom not just to abort kids freedom not to engage in decadent sexual acts everywhere no no freedom under god's laws freedom to uh, do whatever we can do under god's laws and God's laws ensure absolute liberty. And any time you open the gates to abortion, homosexuality, decadent sexuality, you can bet governments are going to grow and regulate every part of life. And that's what's happened over the last 50 to 60 years. As we have opened the floodgates to immorality, guess what happens? Governments consume huge portions of the gross national income. That's why we're at about 60 percent here in America. And regulations upon innocent people everywhere. And uh, friends, we're looking at basically the modern world turning into a massive, massive tyrannical control system where people are being controlled by governments and yet allowed to do a little bit of aberrant sexuality and killing their kids uh, as often as they possibly can. For some reason, the modern state believes that uh, birth imploding the population is a good idea, too. So, again, we're not saying that the modern state has rational. We're not saying that uh, the, the modern humanist, existentialist, statist is rational. He's not rational. He's, he's into breaking down families, breaking down morality, breaking down freedom and everything else. But uh, we're into retaining and sustaining some civilizations and hopefully uh, somehow hanging on to some faith, family, and freedom in the next generation. So there are people listening to our radio station that do believe that freedom is a great concept and, and really agree with the founders of our nation, the United States of America, that guaranteed some freedom in the Bill of Rights. And and thankfully, freedom has been somewhat sustained over some 250 years, but but being attacked uh, just about everywhere. And here's an example, Dave, where freedom is being attacked. Australians are are attacking homeschool freedoms. And this comes from some folks who attended our Sydney conference when I did four conferences in Australia and New Zealand over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, Nicola from Sydney writes in, you asked me about the culture of the homeschool community in Sydney. I said that we don't do anything as a whole united homeschool community. That's True until last week, the NSW Board of, I guess that's New South Wales Board of Studies, the department that overlooks all education in New South Wales, issued a new information pack for homeschoolers on Monday. The information pack uh, uh, states how a person becomes registered and what is required of them as a homeschooler in the state. The new pack is nothing short of a dictatorship. It was prepared without any consultation. The homeschool community was told that we had to accept the package and that it has already been signed off by the education minister. End of story. Under the new homeschooling information pack in Australia, New South Wales, the Board of Studies, BOS, can drop in whenever they like to check that an ongoing compliance of requirements are being met. That is, your friendly bureaucrats will come in and double check to make sure everything's happening in your home As per their requirements, the amount of time a homeschool family has to spend on a certain subject educational outcome has to be comparable to time allocated by the schools for that particular subject educational outcome. Um, All applications to register or re-register to homeschool takes about three months. Therefore, you cannot start to homeschool or re-register uh, immediately, if your child is in a bad situation in the school system, the child has to remain there until the three months has elapsed and the BOS has given permission to you to homeschool your child. A child has to be taught on the grade level approved by the BOS. Re-registration has to occur to get permission to teach on materials outside, higher or lower grade level other than that appears in the school system. Ergo, principal individuality shot through the head. Uh, because guess what? Public schools have no concept of what the homeschool environment is and what it is to celebrate the principle of individuality when you're doing the one on one and you're rejecting the one size fits all approach to education, which happens in the homeschool approach. 
Friends, homeschooling is incredibly powerful in maximizing on the principle of individuality and life integration, as I talk about in my book. But the state systems don't understand it, and they water it all down, and they bring the least common denominator approach to education again and again and again and again because they they have a centralized, standardized approach to education. And, uh, of course, they're going to break down education and try to impose that broken-down form of education on homeschools, too. Uh, If a family moves home, re-registration has to occur for each child. Per the NSW requirements, the new package is not focusing on obtaining certain Certain knowledge, skills, or information is focusing on school at home. It is focusing on all knowledge being taught in certain BOS identified outcomes and content. Friends, a lot of despotic regulations being imposed on our friends in New South Wales, Australia, which, by the way, is a huge part of the Australian uh, homeschool program because uh, Sydney is a, is one of the largest cities as you know in uh, in Australia. So this this is this is a big deal. This is going to sh- perhaps attempt to shut down a, a piece of homeschooling in Australia. But the, the homeschooling community, according to Nicola, is an uproar. A local homeschooling mum, that's what they call moms out there, mums. A local homeschooling mum started a petition that has 500 signatures in the first 24 hours. You said to me at the NCFIC conference that if you don't hang together, you will hang together. You will hang together. Or I said hang separately, but that's the same kind of deal. And he says, that's what we're doing. We're trying to hang together because we want to pull, pull something together. And sign this petition, get a letter off to the education minister, and hopefully uh, we will see some changes. That's what uh, Nicola is saying from New South Wales, Australia. And God bless these people. They're fighting the good fight. Dave, I think it's an opportunity to pull together maybe an Australian Homeschool Legal Defense Association. I don't think they have one. They have they have people out there fighting the good fight for family issues, but they need, an, I think, an HSLDA in Australia. And perhaps our good friends from HSLDA stateside can help them in this endeavor. Uh, perhaps. And maybe this is a great opportunity. Maybe this is the best opportunity ever to shut down the bureaucracy. Because uh, you think about it, a bureaucracy that keeps education from happening. And as, as I understand it, they could probably keep it from happening in private schools as well, yeah. not just home schools, but one that keeps excellence from happening. One that is has a stated objective of making sure your kids are as stupid as the public kids, public school kids. And that's, I think, what that says there. Don't you dare let your kids be smarter than the public educated Do ones. Do not teach them above their grade level. Do not teach them above their grade level. Because we're all about making sure the public school kids are like everybody else. And and the way we do that is we we cut off the top of the curve. Microsoft, I don't know if you've been following this. Microsoft has been criticized that the the current CEO, who is uh, Bill Gates' right-hand man, been running it for a while. He's had this program in place that's led to a bad culture there. And and the program is uh, you rate people and then you cut off the bottom. Uh, people yeah. who rate the lowest. Mm-hmm. And so managers would hire people that uh, that would be really low so so they would get cut off at the bottom mm-hmm. so that the manager could keep surviving. And, and this is what, what they're trying to do in Australia. They're trying to destroy the curve by making sure everybody is, well, Well, it's the uneducated. centralized, standardized approach to education, David, that, of course, is antithetical to what the homeschool environment's all about. Read my book, Upgrade the Ten Secrets to the Best Education for Your Child. And I understand that a lot of people drag in the public school model into the homeschool and pretty much ruin homeschools everywhere because they don't understand that the homeschool system is based upon a focus on character. Relationships are essential. Principal individuality is is really, really critical in the homeschool. And life integration, absolutely essential. We've got to life integrate uh, what we learn. And, and that kind of thing doesn't isn't allowed for in a very, very rigid institutionalized system, which is what you find in public schools today. Anyway, friends, uh, there are homeschoolers out in Australia still trying to fight for the life of family freedoms there. And Dave, family freedoms, parental freedoms to make the choices for the children's education, I think is critical. And and I'm, I'm bothered. Anytime, anytime bureau rats pull together and develop some standardized approach to to home education or or to to education and it bothers me it, it again i think it ties into the fact the socialists understand they've got to have everybody marching in lockstep otherwise there won't be a socialist country and massive large tyrannical centralized governments in the year 2045 well, total control begins with thought control, and, and this is a thought control policy. This is where you control the inputs that go into a student, what great, what subjects they can study. I believe under these policies, a, a parent who wants to open the Bible and teach it to his children, uh, that could th- the government could come there and say, you can't do that. I believe that those policies, because that be, then becomes a curriculum choice. I, I'm not sure if watching porn is curriculum, but, but doing the Bible could be curriculum. Um, this is thought control in order 
order to achieve total control over population. And and the battle for family freedoms is well worthwhile, friends. I mean, it's it's, it's one of the few battles worth fighting in the 21st century. Uh, there were some battles fought for religious freedoms in the 1600s, 1700s. Thankfully, uh, churches were given some measure of freedom, and there hasn't been a huge amount of persecution of pastors and such since the 1700s. But right now, persecution of parents and and the, the, the effort to be sure that children are moved out from under their parents and put into a secular socialist system is very, very strong, very, very strong in the, in the Western world. And the worst part of it all is that many, 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 many children wind up not discipled in the fear of God in these public schools. And and the end result is they join the massive apostasy of the modern day, uh, which has been devastating to the faith. And it's it's contributed to the breakdown of the Christian faith and Christian culture in Australia, New Zealand, and Switzerland. Here's an example from Switzerland, Dave, where the Swiss are uh, working on ditching God from the national anthem. Apparently, there's a contest right now going on in Switzerland. People aren't real keen on their national anthem, which apparently had some references to God, and uh, they're sick of it. They they want to get rid of this. And my understanding is it may be a, a private organization that's working very hard to change this. Um, the man in charge of the competition claims that Swiss society is religiously neutral, and therefore they're working on a new Swiss psalm, they say. They still call it a Swiss psalm. <laughs> so it's, it's a Swiss psalm, but it would be... Uh, without any reference to God. Before you know it, Swiss cheese will no longer be holy. Yeah. Okay, and Kyle Bob, actually, a uh, good friend of this program, he's he's talked about Switzerland here. He's He apparently, uh, he, his wife is Swiss, I know. He's a homeschooling dad and a pastor of a church down in Colorado Springs that listened to our program from time to time. And Carl says that... Um, that assisted suicide's been legal in Switzerland since 1918. Um, they've had legal prostitution since 1942. I guess about 10% of the population avails themselves to prostitutes or something. It's just outrageous, just outrageous. 14,000 registered prostitutes in Switzerland. Abortion's been legal since 2002 after an initiative where 72.2% of the voters voted to make abortion legal. By the way, 67% still identify themselves with a the church. I show you how irrelevant the average church attender is in Switzerland. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, attend a Christian church, but we like we kill kids on the weekends. Um, so that's what's happening in Switzerland. Switzerland's uh, Switzerland's another nation that's breaking down in terms of the faith. And uh, Australia again is moving more and more strongly towards homosexual marriage and the rest. So, Dave, I mean, the story of Europe, Australia, New Zealand is not a good story. Again, we are at the very, very end of Western civilization when it comes to these nations. America is still a shot. Still a shot for America. Good news from Iowa. I'm going to read some stuff from Iowa in just a moment. America is winning some battles. Americans, homeschoolers, are winning battles here in America. It may be tough elsewhere. Uh, Pro-lifers, pro-family, pro-homeschool folks, pro-parental rights folks may be losing battles around the world. Not so much in America. We've got some good stories coming out from America, and I'm going to touch on this in just a moment. Iowa. Hey, progress for parental rights in Iowa. Be back in just a moment. This is Kevin Smith. Folks, one of the passions we have on this radio program is to see a Malachi 4 revival in the hearts of fathers and sons across America. I believe this is the catalyst to the restoration of faith, family, and freedom in the 21st century. And that's why we are sponsoring our father-son retreat in Colorado. And folks, we have selected the most inspiring, visionary speakers we can find for this father-son retreat. And you will enjoy inspiring talks, father-son Olympics, hiking, swimming, sports, and most importantly, time away with your son in the Colorado mountains. The event takes place at one of the very best mountain resorts in Colorado, the Crooked Creek Ranch, nestled in a stunning mountain range near Fraser. Please register today at check.org on the web for this once-in-a-lifetime experience for you and your son. 
That's check.org on the web, C-H-E-C dot org, or call 877-842-2432. That's 877-842-2432 to be a part of the Father-Son Retreat. Welcome back to the Generations Radio Broadcast. Kevin Swanson here with you. I'm a homeschool father of five. Also involved in homeschooling for the last uh, 20 years or so out here in Colorado. Uh, Executive Director for Christian Home Educators of Colorado for a time and now a director for that organization. In fact, we have a board meeting coming up next Tuesday night. But here's good news from Iowa. And this is the niche organization that fought very hard for this. And Bill Gustav, who I know very well, good friend, a guy who's been fighting tooth and nail for homeschool freedoms in the state of Iowa, and they have gained one of the most outstanding homeschool successes in the nation. So for this reason, hey, kudos to Bill Gustav and the niche organization out in Iowa. This is super good news, friends. Iowa used to be one of the tougher states. As I recall, Dave, looking at the HSLDA, you know, degrees of freedom across America, Iowa and the Dakotas was never really that strong, but Iowa now has a great improvement in its homeschool law. As of this year, thanks to the enactment of House File 215, Iowa families now have five lawful options from which to choose when embarking on the homeschool voyage. Option one, supervising teacher. Option two, homeschool assistance program. Option three, private instruction with filing the private instruction report. Uh, Option four, private instruction without filing the private instruction report. No red tape on that one. Option five, an independent private instruction program with almost no red tape. So a couple of options were added. And Dave, my understanding is that with some of the options in which there is very little, if no red tape whatsoever, there are options in which you are not signing up to any uh, public school bennies. So if you, if you say no public school bennies or very few public school bennies, then the government has even less to say about your home school. Ergo, they're, they're, it's sort of a one-to-one. The, the more you sign up for the public school bennies, the less freedom you will enjoy, the less rights of privacy and parental freedom you will enjoy. It seems to me to be a fairly equitable law as worked on by Niche and HSLDA and, and others. Scott Woodruff, my understanding from HSLDA, also contributed somewhat to this effort. And man, this is good news. New Mexico got a huge breakthrough about 10 years ago. I know Texas has a great homeschool law. There are some co- states around the United States, I was going to say some countries, and they may at some point be countries, but some states within the United States of America where there is substantial freedom for parents and for families who are making educational choices. And for this reason, I'm in a pretty good mood today. Kevin, I, I think they should take this to its conclusion. They ought to just follow this line of thinking and keep running with it. How about we can all opt out of every government program, uh, not just education. We can opt out of Social Security. We can opt out of Obamacare and and, and just leave us alone. There you go. There How, about you go. How, yeah. about, How about we have an yeah. opt out of everything? Everything, like, like a uh, an opt out... Uh, sweep. How about the this? opt-out sweep where you just sign a document, one document, and you say, I don't need any of these bennies for healthcare, for social security, for education, and therefore you will not tax me and you will not regulate me. Right. So- now, 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 the rest of the poor slobs who, who want to kiss the chains that bind them, so be it. Right. They can kiss the chains that bind them. But, the, but those of us who don't like kissing chains, mm-hmm. th- those of us who love freedom more than security in the animating contest of freedom, better than the chains that bind. Right. Yeah. But but you understand when you sign that document, you'll never be eligible for food stamps. You'll never be able to get that EBT card. You get to drive on the public roads because you pay the taxes at the yeah. pump and so forth. But but you're saying, I, I have a lifetime ban on receiving Social Security benefits. I have a lifetime ban on receiving uh, food stamps or receiving Obamacare or Obama phones or uh, infant win- women and children. I will live responsibly and take responsibility for myself. Ergo government. Just leave me alone. What do you yeah. think? Or even the old wrecked car thing. Remember? The old wrecked car the, thing? Where you could turn in your car for 2000 bucks. Oh, oh, the uh, cash for clunkers. Cash for clunkers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to do that either. Do that, that, was a, that was a dumb idea. Uh, and basically, we'll just call it the, the Liberty yeah. the Liberty Initiative. What do you think? Okay. Love it. Love it. Anyway, Iowa has made some progress for the Islands of Freedom, friends. 
And uh, I am I could not be in a better mood for that. Now, Dave, here's some other good news. Uh, homeschooling being regulated badly in Australia, but the good news is homeschooling is taking off in China. In China? Yeah, communist China. Yeah. Man, everything's going thunk? to China now, huh? Who would have thunk? Apparently, there's some 16,000 homeschoolers in China now. I think this should cause the unions in America to panic. 18,000 parents in China have expressed interest in homeschooling their children. Some 2,000 have already started to give lessons at home. Okay, so it's just getting started. It's just just getting started, but... But, you know, when you start outsourcing education to the Chinese, where does it end? This is the Wall Street Journal. And apparently, uh, parents are unhappy with the rigid teaching style of traditional schools and recent student abuse scandals. Some tiger moms in China are keeping their kids at home. Tiger moms. Tiger moms. That's, that's, that's a, a real, you know, hardcore academic-minded moms that are imposing all kinds of discipline on their kids and and um, not exactly doing it in a biblical covenantal manner, but they're trying to incorporate some level of character into their kids. So that's another story. I but, thought maybe it was like Sarah Palin saying Mama Grizzly. Apparently, Chinese parents who choose to teach their kids at home, over half of them do so because they object to the teaching philosophy of traditional schools, which tend to be fairly rigid in nature. Others who choose to homeschool their kids think that an ordinary classroom, the pace of lessons is too slow. It's 10%. Kids are not fully respected. 7%. Another 7% said their kids were simply sick of traditional school life. And another 6%, including a number of Christians, said they chose homeschooling for religious reasons. And that's that's good news, too. That's a 2007. Okay, that's that's a more recent survey. That, that came out just recently from the 21st Century Education Research Institute of Beijing based NGO. All right. So that's the scoop, friends. Um, China looking at homeschooling and it would not surprise me, Dave, if homeschooling took off in China. Here's here's the irony. Homeschooling homeschooling is getting started in China at the same time Sweden and Germany are stomping it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's an irony. It's an irony. Now, Dave, I will say that homeschooling your children is important to the salvaging of the faith in multiple reasons for multiple reasons i just finished reading a biography on a a multi-generational family that grew up in north korea over the past 50 or 60 years and one of the reasons they got out i mean these were these were people who sustained the faith i mean they barely sustained the faith they were not able to share the faith much they weren't able to talk about it much they barely breathed a few things about their belief in god over the past 20 to 5 to 30 years even husbands and wives could barely talk about it they could barely pray together they of course never attended attended religious services because you'd be arrested within 10 minutes. And and the reason they got out, Dave, was because the reason this family escaped across the border, the, the, the feather that broke the camel's back in terms of these North Korean refugees getting out and walking over snow-capped mountains over a period of three to four weeks in virtually bare, free, bare feet and barely making it over the North Korean border on the north side into China. The reason they did this, Dave, was because their children attended public schools and they were afraid their children might breathe some mention of God in the public schools, and that would result in their ushering away to a concentration camp and more likely than not being shot in the head. So, so Dave, it, it, it was the fact that they would rather homeschool their kids and get their kids out of the public schools where their kids would be brainwashed and where their kids would be monitored by those with a counter worldview, shall we say, a communist worldview. This was the reason they had to get out of that country because homeschooling was illegal in North Korea. They could not homeschool their own kids. They could separate themselves somewhat from society and protect themselves themselves and pass their faith from one generation to the next over a period of four to five generations. This happened. This really happened in North Korea, the worst hellhole on planet Earth. But the reason they had to get out was because of their children. It was their children. And Dave, ultimately, I think far more important than even the freedom to worship in a public place uh, is the, the freedom to homeschool and to keep your children out of the communist schools or the socialist schools in the case of America, and, uh, and to inculcate a biblical worldview in our kids. Um, and that's the reason they had to get out of North Korea. 
Well, Kevin, we know that the kingdom of Christ only grows by discipleship. Whether you're discipling the nations, whether you're discipling institutions, whether you're discipling the man on the street, or whether you're discipling your own children. When we disciple our own children, we call that homeschooling. And when we disciple the man on the street, we call that evangelism. When we, call, when we disciple the nations, uh, we're proclaiming the law of nation, the God of nations. We're doing what Christ said at the Great Commission. Uh, we're teaching all things that he has commanded us. That is the way the kingdom grows. So when somebody says to you that you cannot disciple your children, or we're going to try and disciple your children instead of you discipling your children, and that is they're going to get between you and discipleship of the children, uh, they are basically trying to thwart the growth of the kingdom of Christ. And we just have to step in and say, no, not going to happen. Dave, ultimately, I think if we're going to really bring some kind of a worthy opposition to the almost total dominance of socialism and humanism in the modern world, we have to erode the foundations of the monopoly that these socialists have over public schools. The faith will not survive. The faith will not survive unless homeschooling freedoms, family freedoms, parental freedoms are defended by godly, courageous, faith-filled people in nations like Germany, England, Australia, and certainly China and America. And thankfully, there are people in Iowa, there are people around the United States that are fighting this battle. Hey, our backs are against the wall, friends. The Christian faith is barely hanging on by its fingertips, and the possibility of passing the faith on to the next generation in China and North Korea, almost nil, and the possibility of passing the faith on to the next generation in America is very, very small. It's like 12% from recent data. And... uh and so, hey, if we don't get our kids out of these public schools, if we don't find some way in which to solidify the passing on of the faith from one generation to the next and to disciple our children as we sit in the house, as we walk by the way, as we rise up, as we lie down, we don't have these parental freedoms. Personally, I, I think the faith is going to dissipate. I, I think whatever progress has been made thus far for the Christian faith is going to be overwhelmed by the doctrine era of Charles Darwin, Karl Marx, John Dewey, and the guys that control the public schools today. Read read my book, Apostate Friends, to understand the lock hold that a foreign worldview has on billions of people around the globe. And unless we find some way to dissolve these chains and enable families to disciple their own children in their homes and to get their kids out of these socialist schools, I think we're going to be in trouble. I think the faith is going to be in trouble. Hey, this is the battle for the Christian faith in the 21st century. The faith is not going away. I truly believe that we're going to win this battle, but it's it's going to be the Gideons. It's going to be the Joshuas. It's going to be the people willing to wage the war, fight the battle uh, that will ultimately make the difference in this generation and the next generation. These are the battles worth fighting, friends. And Kevin, we shouldn't think that these battles are going to be easy. We should expect them to be bloody. Uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't recoil from a bloody battle. So far, we have not resisted under bloodshed. Uh, it's the old hymn, shall it be carried to heaven on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize upon the bloody seas. There are people who have died and fought for the faith all through church history. Why do we think that we're going to get to sit on the Davenport and just watch history happen? No, we're going to be part of history, and that part of history is going to call for us to get into the battle. It's going to call for some of us to make great sacrifices, just like the saints have made great sacrifices in the past, and just like in the past, when the saints are willing to step up and fight and bleed and die for something more important than themselves and their own comfort, the kingdom of God will grow, and it'll happen again, just like it's happened in the past. It's just so hard to find people willing to get out of their comfort zone and fight for something, fight for anything, do do something for the kingdom of God. Try to salvage some level of freedom and then stress their comfort level enough, put their cappuccino down long enough to homeschool their kids. I know it's a pain. I know it's a challenge. I know it bucks the status quo, but somebody had better buck the status quo if faith, family, and freedom is going to survive in this generation. So come on, let's get your pants on straight, buckle our boots, and get out there and do the work. And, and that's what's happening in Australia, friends. I think these Australian people are going to hang together. They're not going to hang separately. They're going to hang together, and they're going to build an Australian Homeschooling Legal Defense Association. If I just got a note back from Mike Donnelly from HSLDA, he's more than happy, more than happy to get on the phone and start talking to our friends in Australia to give them some guidance as to how to start an Australian Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Friends, if you need some help, you email Mike Donnelly, MikeD at HSLDA.org. I just got the message on my computer before the program ended today. So you email uh, HSLDA out here in America and get some get some encouragement, get some guidance 
from our friends here at HSLDA who have fought the good fight and done some great work in establishing freedom in many of our states, and hopefully that can happen in the provinces out in Australia as well. Again, Mike D at HSLDA.org for anybody out in Australia who would like some help in establishing an Australian Homeschool Legal Defense Association or just some support and some encouragement in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, you can interact with my radio program by emailing me directly at host at kevinswanson.com. You can also hear the program anytime, anywhere in the world at kevinswanson.com. This is Kevin Swanson inviting you back again next time as we continue to lay down a vision for the next generation.